70 years ago, Wales was in the midst of another health crisis. An infection without a clear cure was rife and patients were placed on lockdown as the country grappled with the prolific killer tuberculosis. Hundreds of children's lives were changed forever as they entered Craigenorth Castle, a TB sanatorium from 1922 until 1959. Many stayed for years, only able to see their parents once a month for two hours. Ellie Pitt has the stories of some of the former patients. Signs of the past still linger in these corridors. Evidence of the hospital wards where children once lay, waiting for the day they could go home. In an attempt to stop the spread of one of the nation's biggest killers at the time, in the 1920s, sanatoria were set up across the UK. Those with tuberculosis were sent away to these hospitals, kept apart from the rest of the population. Kraigenos Castle near Swansea was a TB sanatorium for children. Often separated from their families for years, they grew up in a strict regime of the widely accepted treatment at the time. Roger Bynan contracted TB in his knee as a toddler after falling over. In 1948, aged just 18 months old, he was given a bed at Kraigenos, and that's where he stayed for six years. There's, there's something in the back of my mind that's never, never going to, you know, that's my cross, I suppose. It, it's buried and it's never going to come out. I mean, to a certain extent, I don't want it to come out. It's, it frightens me. Many of the children of Kraigenos have said they have suppressed the trauma of their time there. Mary was 10 years old when she was admitted with TB in her lungs. The teddy bear she took in was a small comfort. Her diary reminds her that for the first few days, she cried and cried. It was as though you were in complete world institutionalization, complete world of your own, uh, with where the staff had absolutely massive power over you, really. Um, and you couldn't really do anything. Uh, one girl tried to escape, I seem to remember. I think it's very difficult to convey to people what it was actually like. And of course, it was a terrible way to treat small children. Um, we're probably all emotionally deprived by the time we came out, which is probably why we all suppressed it like mad and didn't talk about it. While some pushed the memories away, for others, the methods of medicine at the time have become etched in the mind. Fresh air was believed to be one of the best ways to treat TB in the 1950s, and so the children's beds were brought out here onto the terrace. It meant they slept outside, rain or shine, summer or winter. Some patients remember waking up with inches of snow on their beds in the morning. Graham Canning was two and a half years old when he went into Kraigenos. For almost the next five years, he was made to rest by being strapped down in a bed on several occasions to try and undo the, uh, the knots around the outside of the bed because the straps were around my chest and then they'd go under the bed. But um, I understand from my auntie that I figured out a way of doing that. But then the nurses found out that I knew how to do it. So instead of the straps going around that way, the straps that went that way. And that was the end of my uh, getting out of bed or trying to get out of bed. I think a lot of it must be down to boredom, just, just lying there, seemingly time just, just going away. Talking about their time here seems to help with the long-lasting impact of their stays. Roger and Graham's is an enduring friendship. They were in hospital beds close to each other. But one day, Graham disappeared. I honestly thought he had died. I thought he was one of the children, by, by which time you were aware that, that you know, children were, were dying there. As time got on then, I always had a hankering to find out what actually happened. Then, a few years ago, Graham's name appeared on a website run by a fellow former patient, and the pair were reunited. We've had some good laughs since. Oh, we have, yes, yeah. We were in regular contact yeah. with, with WhatsApp and uh, phone yeah. calls and uh, periodically we'll get together for a meal in the... Yeah, that's an increase in friendship. Yes, nice. best mate. And, and, uh, and he's beginning to learn Welsh.
The sanatorium closed in 1959. It's now a wedding venue. For the children of Kryganos, their early years in this castle shaped them, but they won't let the practices of the past define them. Ellie Pitt, ITV News.